Here I've got a nice limit, which is maybe at the level of a bonus problem from a first semester calculus course. And I say a bonus problem because you have to put a lot of ideas together in order to evaluate this limit that don't seem super connected at first. Okay, so let's look at what we've got. Our goal is to find the limit as n approaches infinity of sine of pi times the square root of 4n squared minus n. So let's notice the tricky thing about this is that the argument here approaches infinity. So you're looking at something like sine of infinity, which clearly doesn't make sense. And that's where the trick comes in. Instead of thinking of it just like this, you want to apply the fact that sine is 2 pi periodic in order to write this in terms of something where the argument is not infinity, but the argument is an indeterminate form. So I'll take this and I'll rewrite it. So I'll just copy over what I need. So I've got the limit as n goes to infinity. I have sine of pi times the square root of 4n squared minus n, and then we have minus 2 times n. So I'm allowed to just freely subtract that 2 times n because it's really 2 times n pi. And here I'm using, again, the fact that sine is 2 pi periodic. So we have sine of theta is the same thing as sine of theta plus minus 2 pi n. In this case, we have minus 2 pi times n. But now let's notice that I have achieved something where the argument is, like I said, an indeterminate form instead of the argument is approaching infinity. And indeterminate forms possibly have finite limits. So like I said, this is an indeterminate form. It's type infinity minus infinity. We could approach this a couple of different ways. Maybe the best way to do it would be to rewrite this using the radical conjugate. So in other words, I can take this thing in here. So maybe I'll just highlight that I will have these in yellow parentheses and I'll multiply the yellow parentheses by the following object. So it'll be the square root of 4n squared minus n plus 2n over the square root of 4n squared minus n plus 2n. So we're going to be left with the limit as n approaches infinity. And then I have sine of pi times a bunch of stuff now. Let's see, in the numerator, we have a difference of squares scenario. That's because we've got this minus this, and then this plus this, those are multiplying together. Like a minus b times a plus b, that clearly gives us a squared minus b squared. In this case, it'll be 4n squared minus n, and then minus 4n squared. So like I said, that's from our difference of squares. Let's maybe telegraph that a little bit. So if this is a plus b and this is a minus b, this is a squared minus b squared. Now I'll take this denominator and I'll factor an n out of it. And that's just kind of thinking ahead a little bit. So let's see, that's gonna give me something like n times the square root of four minus one over n. So that's what I get from factoring n out of this first term. Notice it's like factoring an n squared out of the terms under the square root. And then I'll have this is all plus two. Here, let's put this in parentheses like I factored n out of it. So that's maybe a simplification of what I've got now. And now I can start canceling a little bit. So let's notice this 4n squared and this 4n squared cancel. I can bring my minus sign out. This leaves me with the limit as n approaches infinity of the sine of, maybe I'll write this as minus pi times. Now again, I'll do one more simplification. This n and this n cancel down to a one. And then I'll have the square root of 4 minus 1 over n plus 2. So something that looks like this. 
But now let's let n approach infinity. We can, in fact, bring the limit inside because the inside clearly has a limit and sine is a continuous function. So as n approaches infinity, this guy trends off towards zero and we end up with something that looks like sine of minus pi over four. It's minus pi over four because we have the square root of four plus two. The square root of four plus two is clearly equal to four. But we know the value of sine here. It's minus the square root of two over two. And so we've calculated our goal limit. And that's a good place to stop.